Well, welcome to the slightly updated and refurbished, uh, what you call the bloody place. Uh, anyway, it's uh, had a paint job, a few electric sockets fixed, and this is the Great Awakening Conference 2023. And uh, this is actually day two. They've put all this stuff here in. It's all very nice. Check your parking. And especially check people driving around like this. <coughs> so um, it's about 9.30 on the Saturday. Uh, Tina has um, had a very serious accident. She's actually, she spoke at the conference. We've also got a very troublemaking artist here. And he's got uh, a whole lot of printed stuff. You ran this stuff with an AI computer on a Mac, didn't you? Uh, well, I am the AI in this case. <laughs> well, I don't know about the artificial, but there's certainly no intelligence. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and what, what's all this amazing, amazing work here that you're displaying? Yes. And you are L L L L L L L L Lloyd? They call me Lloyd. Lloyd. Lloyd do Tanning. They, do they call you anything else? <laughs> Well, this is magnificent. Thank you, Van. It's Thank great. You very much. I mean, really, really great stuff, and it puts on a great show. Yeah. And as I said before, you got, that huge you've got vertical. A with it. You've got. A, yeah. You've always had a thing with that one, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. It's the vertical flash. The vertical line, yeah. And it turns out it's a 12-layer alien facility underneath that. Underneath. Dot dot dot. Uh, we've got a person here who's got some kind of this is based in music just doing a thing and you've got some association with this artist here oh yes we've got to go through this myself and Lloyd and his artwork is incredible it is you know, incredible. somebody came up to me yesterday and said I want one of them on my bedspread yeah I said to Lloyd you better start printing them onto you know king size bedspreads he doesn't make them big enough for your bedspread no, 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 no. <laughs> By the way, that was Steve Mirror, and he runs this thing. This is the extraterrestrial highway. That's not absolutely fantastic what's going on here. There's lots of the um, biomed machines, resonance energy. Lots of booths doing things. It's an absolutely fantastic conference. And you can have your uh, picture taken with some of the speakers. This is a, a professional conference. And all the usual people you would expect here. There's three stages here. Uh, this is actually the third stage. So um, different speakers of different types can... Uh, can uh, this is what they call Hangar 3. So it's a tremendous event. And... Uh, I mean, I mentioned uh, Tina Bird. She actually received a death threat just before the conference with uh, Kerry Cassidy. And two days later, she has received a fall. Like myself, I had two falls, which were induced. And she, like myself, had a problem with her left foot, the ankle. So she's actually here in a wheelchair. And that's serious. I've got a very seriously damaged couple of knees. Well, they're not damaged, they are damaged. And uh, uh, We're lacking in core, uh, in, in any of the eight core areas. I'm just doing a little blog. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So, uh, uh, in the previous years, you would have had Star Wars uh, and Battlestar Galactica, you know, versions of big craft and no, I don't think there's any Battlestar Galactica stuff but it's uh, vendors are doing good business and on the other side of this thing you have the uh, speakers signing and I'm here with the beautiful Maria Wheatley we we'll have to see if uh, this, this artwork 
<laughs> uh, alien artwork's really quite interesting. This is for you to get your picture taken with. Uh, I think those two have had too much lovely jubbly. Billy Carson is the guy running this show. He took over the franchise last last year, I think. Jimmy Church, uh, obviously you know him from Coast to Coast, and uh, got Nick Pope. He's not his plausible non-deniability. And James Fox, some of the some of his movies really excellent, and a lot of really brilliant people. You got Daryl Sim there, and. Excuse me, uh, Barry, have you got your universal translator on? I have, friends, yes. I was speaking to a lovely girl there from Newry, and she speaks 100 to 1, just like anybody else from our part of the world. <laughs> she can. <laughs> no, it is really great. Great to see you back in this venue. It is. It is nice. Um, there's a good vibe in the air. Yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of good speakers. There's a lot of good information being passed back and forward. So it's, it's great to be, have the opportunity to come here to do this every time. Good. And you got some books? I have, yes. As you well know, the lot I bought off you the last time went, went missing. The Banshee. <laughs> Mary Rodwell is going to be here. Well, this is what they call Hangar 2. And this is Hangar 2. Some of the stars. Maria in there. Inside the main man. And this is Hangar 2, which would contain enough people at any reasonable size conference on this subject alone. So um, this is a big deal. That's why putting an operation on this size, even this size. Ten years. Uh, Maria Wheatley, have you saying that some of your work's been banned? My latest book, I've been writing for English Heritage for ten years. I write their guide, Ancient Sites of Stonehenge, and I've been a good writer for them. Since I brought out about the lost civilizations, there's three lost civilizations in Stonehenge, banned. Is this banned because it's got something uh, about the marching season by any chance? It's banned because it's talking about the long lost uh, civilizations, the star child of Stonehenge as well, and other sides of Earth energies that the archaeologists don't want you to know about. Whoa! Does that mean we should get your signed book and buy it right now? Well, you can't buy this for another three weeks, but then yes, uh, support me in my work because I'm already starting my next book about dousing ancient sites worldwide and my discoveries in Egypt and Malta and far beyond. Well, no wonder we have to have a fire extinguisher behind you because this seems to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miles. Okay, Ben. This was a very interesting. So, um, see, nice to see. You. It, on the subject, it was it was it was all a hoax. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've got a hoax. Just context contextualizing. All oh, right. This Graham Rendell, who's got a very good YouTube channel, he's been Disclosure Media, and um, he's just done a live talk here in Hangar Three, uh, which, as you see, is just kind of a little corner thing here. Without, it's not, it's not really a hangar. Um, he's just a very interesting talk on. UFOs before Roswell. Now, a lot of the skeptics say. Ben, are well, you to, uh, what? They say. Before Roswell? Well, believe it or I'm not. I'm finishing yeah. this interview right now. <laughs> if you ask the, the average UFO skeptic of the Philip Classes and the Donald Menzels, they'll say, there were no UFOs before Kenneth Arnold in 1947. That's well, not true. That's when the, the concept was popularized in the media and well, in culture. Well, the Italians and Germans, there were UFOs in there Europe UFOs, in the 30s, have got those the, the UFOs, I mean, there, there's no doubt there was a kind of a flap that began in World War II, but that's, it's a global flap that still continues to this day. However, the actual phenomenon can be traced back much further. In fact, it seemed all, everything, including flying sources of alien abduction and things like this, for all we know, it goes back into prehistoric times. What Graham has done is he has explored a very interesting concept that is UFO sightings before the concept was popularised because, of course, because it wasn't popular, they were given new names such as Foo Fighters. This was a nickname given to them by Royal Air Force pilots. 
and there was a major, there's been several major investigations, including one by the RAF, which Winston Churchill was personally involved in in 1942 that ran right through to the end of World War II. And there's many, many others. There were sightings in the Pacific Theatre. There were sightings by Polish crews, American crews. I mean, they could, for all we know, Axis crews saw them too, although because the Axis countries were pretty much wiped out at the end of the war, we will never know. Very, very interesting talk indeed. I mean, he did demolish a couple of what he thinks those are some myths, which I'm not so sure about. I mean, you and I both know Igor Witkowski. We both know it's a bit more complicated than the way Graham portrayed it. However, still a very, very interesting talk by Graham Randall. Well, what was he basically saying? We were poo-pooing the Foo Fighters that the, there were no German flying saucers. He said that. these things were simply inventions by American neo-Nazis in the 1950s. Um, and um, so there were the, no German yeah. flying discs made in the pra in Prague or, or any of that. Stuff. So he claims out so of the Skoda, claims. so-called Skoda works. Yeah, that's now from what I gather, that's not the case. I think uh, there is more evidence than he's saying. Well, he, I don't have it to hand off the top of my yeah. head, but I, I believe it exists. Yeah. But I mean, there's quite a lot of stuff about various, even you know, you know, uh, piston or piston engine flying saucer stuff out of the Skoda work. Oh, the, there was something called the. Fliegende Pannenkuchen, which means the flying pancake, which he showed a photograph of. Yeah. This was an experimental German aircraft, which was literally had a circular plan. So it would, if you look at it from a certain angle, it would look like a flying saucer. But it was an aeroplane. Had a he had a piston engine, like say propeller. It was a conventional aeroplane. But um, we're talking about something more, very very different now. We're talking about a craft that were built that possibly had. I mean, um, I came in with the so-called uh, Adamski craft, which, yeah. you know, when you've got pictures of an, of an Adamski German, when you've got pictures of so-called German flying saucers, and then next, Adamski has flying saucers which are remarkably similar. They are, I mean... Are you saying both are hoax or what? Well, see, the thing is that Adamski's uh, flying saucer photos are supposedly lampshades, of water cooler lids, although these, these items have never been found manufactured anywhere, so... Um, if they are those things, you've got to ask, well, can, can you show us one I mean, I think the same right sort of poo-pooing was used with um, mm. Mayer's stuff. Yeah, and they're doing the same thing now with with the, uh, what is it, the, the, square, the, sphere, the square inside a sphere, which uh, Ryan Graves saw. Apparently it's a radar target balloon. However, if you ask a sceptic, could you show us a photograph of this radar target balloon? They won't show it, because I can't find one and they can't find one. And what's more... When one of them was pushed on this, they sent, he sent the person asking him the question, basically a line drawing with pencil, which he probably did himself. So beware the, you know, debunking is not always true. It's, you know, debunking is a claim as well. It should be treated well, Ben Emblin Jones, are you saying that you told us so? Uh, well, I didn't personally, but uh, several people have. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Enjoy, what's your, what's your opinion? It's a great festival. It's a great. Oh, place. it's a magnificated. I've only, I've, I mean, some the of these day. smaller venues are actually packed. I mean, more than this packed. is just like uh, hog heaven here, if you like UFOs and paranormal, esoteric, conspiratorial things. Yeah, you, it's over 1,500 like-minded souls. The energy is incredible here. I've seen so many people I know and I've made some new friends. Fantastic stuff. Okay, thank you. Hello, Mary. Hello. You've just given a great presentation at this great presentation place. How did it go? Yeah, I think it went well. Excellent. And what was your new thing? What were you talking about this this year? This year is this is your rare visit to the UK from from yeah from Australia, Queensland. You were able to get out of the country without being... <laughs> better not say anything, just in case they won't let you back in. Thank you. I will not say anything in case they won't let me back in. So, what's the beef of what your presentation was and things? Well, primarily how important it is to understand the nature of DNA, because that is really helping us to understand our connection to many of these intelligences that are visiting our planet and who are part of our DNA makeup. And so it's really about this understanding that we're connected to them and have been connected to them right from our genesis. And, well, yes. and what is encoded in our DNA, we've yet to find out because we only have a certain amount that's activated. 
So as it gets activated, more and more abilities manifest, and that's really part of the evolutionary cycle. Of, uh, you've of used the term sapiens. vaccinate. No. No, you didn't. No, activate. Activate. Don't, I don't Go to be careful. I, no, I will not say that word. It's against my religion if I had one. <laughs> we'll not keep, we'll keep religious things out of this. If I had religion, which I don't. But um, this is your first time back in the UK since 2019? I, I, I think so, yes. That's right. Okay, so it's really good to see you. Thank you. And you're, you're being appearing at this great conference yeah. as uh, Mary, Mary Roswell. Sorry, that's a joke you actually use. It's all right, I know. I know, that's fine. I'm quite happy with whatever name they want to give me. These days it doesn't matter, does it? Well, are you going to be here for a week or so, just visit friends? I'm just seeing family after this. And, so and what about uh, um, the International Court of Europe? You're with um, this international group thing still? Uh, well, I'm not doing any more this year on an international scale. This is it for this year. The SETI thing, would you call it? The, uh, uh, Which one? Oh, God. The thing with the astronaut gun. Oh, what, the free Doctor The free Adventure. thing, is that still running or what? Yes, but it's changed to the, the Consciousness and Contact Research Institute. Ah, could you spell that out again? CCRI is the Consciousness and Contact Research Institute. It's evolved into that. And there's three books coming out. Um, and one of them, we had Beyond UFOs, but now we have the others coming out, which are written by scientists as well, that are showing that this is... Consciousness is primary, and that we're moving away from the, the old paradigm of nuts and bolts ufology, because in fact what we're discovering is many of these experiences are actually out of body. 75% of those that have experiences are out of body, and only 25% are actually physical. So we've got to look at the whole. Is that how people sort of end up going through walls, or sort of? Well, that's because often it's just, it's their the spirit body or their astral body actually going through and their physical body is still in the bed. So we're looking at consciousness being primary to this. So we're getting away from the nuts and bolts into a whole new area of consciousness. And that's where this Well, Mary, you're with all these people on the speaker's tables at this yeah. great event. Thank you very much. You're Looks as if we need a conversation in more detail. Okay. Would you wouldn't make a sound of Wiltshire at all? Not this time. Okay. Well, all right. good to see you, Mary Rodwell. Thank you, Thank you very much, Miles. Take care.